Getting your hands on a Raspberry Pi is very challenging, if not impossible, at the moment, which is making people look elsewhere for alternatives. Here we have the MQ Pro from Mango Pi, a single board computer powered by a single core RISC-V based processor with up to a gigabyte of RAM, all in the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi Zero. In this video, we're going to review this board by having a look at its features, software availability, and putting it head to head with the Raspberry Pi Zero to find out if it's worth your hard earned money. Welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with new boards and get notified of our Embedded Systems tutorials. Let's start off with the price of the Mango Pi MQ Pro. At the time of filming, the board is available on AliExpress in two versions. One with half a gig of RAM and one with a gigabyte. The half a gig model is listed at £19.50, which is roughly $23 US dollars, and the one gigabyte model is listed for £22.87, or roughly $28. I'll leave the product link down in the description and that'll have the most up to date pricing on it. You might have noticed that my board is a slightly different colour than these product photos. That's because I've had my board a little while and the newer versions, or the newer manufactured boards, come in this fetching pink colour instead. If we compare this pricing to the Raspberry Pi Zeros, we can see that it is a bit more expensive at £16 for the original Zero W and £17-ish for the newer Zero Two W. As the availability of these boards improve, we should be able to get them back to these prices, and so the Mango Pi MQ Pro is a bit more expensive overall. As I previously mentioned, this board has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi Zero boards, apart from a switch from micro USB to USB-C, and I cannot stress how much better these connectors are. Although it does mean that the Mango Pi board isn't a drop-in replacement for the Raspberry Pi Zero, there'll be some adapters required, but that's a small price to pay. In terms of dimensions, the board comes in at 65 by 30 millimeters, and the mounting holes are in the same place as are the GPIO header pins. Now let's go over the features of this board. It is powered by the all-winner D1 RISC-V processor. I'll cover that more in a moment. The board is available either with 512 megabytes of RAM or one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM, which is actually mounted on the back of the board. The one in front of me here is the one gigabyte version. There is a mini HDMI port, which is compliant to the 1.4 spec, which can apparently do 1080p 60 or 4K 30. Good luck with achieving those numbers though. On the rear of the board, just under the HDMI connector, there is a 20 pin display connector. And on the top of the board, there's a, a 24 pin camera connector. Uh, these are both ribbon connectors. In terms of networking, there is 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 4 support, as well as Bluetooth 4.2. And this is done via a RTL 8723DS module from Realtek. There is a micro UFL connector on board, as well as an onboard chip antenna. So you have a choice there. According to the product page, Ethernet is available via an expansion board connected to the 24 pin connector, the camera one. But this doesn't appear to be sold by Mango Pi, so it's something you'll have to source yourself. There are two USB ports, one host connector, and one on the go, or OTG connector. There is a 40 pin GPIO header, which is the same as the Raspberry Pi header pins. Mine came pre-soldered on this board, but I think now they are being shipped with unsoldered um, headers at the moment, judging by the photos on the product page. In terms of powering this board, you can do this via the USB-C connectors or via the 5 volt pins on the GPIO headers. Okay, so now let's focus on the all-winner D1 chip. This processor is a single core CPU clocked at up to 1 GHz. The core itself is a Xuantai C906 RISC-V core. And RISC-V, for those who don't know, is a processor instruction set architecture, which is an alternative to x86 or ARM ISAs. ISAs standing for instruction set architecture. RISC-V is starting to become a little more common, and we're seeing RISC-V based chips in more, in more single board computers like this one. Also on board this chip, there is a Hi-Fi 4 DSP or digital signal processor from Cadence alongside the, um, the CPU and there is a 2D graphics processor. However, unlike the ARM-based chips on the Raspberry Pi Zeros, there is no 3D uh, GPU here, and that really hurts the graphics performance of the all-winner D1. 
I will leave a link down in the description to the data sheet if you want to refer um, refer to that. Now let's move on to software choices for this board. It is fairly restricted due to the architecture of the chip. Mango Pi themselves supply two images, one for Tina Linux and one for Ambien. I have tested both and Ambien provides a desktop environment to use but the performance is less than stellar and navigating around the GUI is sluggish and it often stalls. I think that it's a waste of resources to want to run a desktop environment on this board. On the other hand, Tina Linux took an absolute age on first boot, um, so much so I gave up whilst it was trying to resize the file system. I'm talking, you know, three, four hours plus I waited for this to, to boot and so I just left it. I actually came across an image of Ubuntu Server, which seemed to work really well out of the box. This is a headless version of Ubuntu with um, some server-centric packages pre-installed. I'll leave a link to the, uh, to the image down below as well as some instructions. It worked perfectly fine with my USB hub and USB Ethernet adapter right out of the box. And then uh, you can enable Wi-Fi at a later stage if you want. Although you will have to download a package to make this work for the Realtek chip. But I'll put all the links uh, to that from Ubuntu down in the description. Now, with a usable operating system on this board, we can see how it performs. General use feels fine, and not too much different to the Raspberry Pi Zero. Running some benchmarks was more tricky than I anticipated. I did not expect much or anything from the GPU, or lack thereof, but it really put a spanner in the works. Any of my video encoding, decoding benchmarks struggled to run, either being not compatible with this architecture, or the results being so inconsistent, I can't trust them. CPU benchmarks, on the other hand, did give us some sensible results to take a look at. The Mango Pi MQ Pro beats the Raspberry Pi Zero in small PT, which is an open source C++ renderer, and it also beats out the Zero in PHP Bench. However, the Pi Zero claws back some ground, beating the MQ Pro in a GZIP file compression. There isn't much point in comparing either of these boards to the Zero 2W, as that is a quad-core processor which walks right over these boards. If you do want more detailed benchmarks, then I'd recommend that you take a look at this article by Brett's Tech, who ran many more benchmarks, and I'll link that down below. It's fair to say that the all-winner D1 chip used on the MQ Pro trades blows with the ARM chip on the Raspberry Pi Zero. However, the Raspberry Pi Zero's processor is over 10 years old, and I think that's based on a, a chip on, on a core design that's actually 10 years older than that. And so it's disappointing that the D1 doesn't beat it much more consistently. Putting all of this together, we can hopefully answer the question of, should you buy this board? Well, I think there are a couple of questions you need to ask yourself before thinking about getting this. Is this a Raspberry Pi Zero alternative in a world where Raspberry Pis are available? No, I don't think so. Although the form factor is the same, the processor sort of lags behind the Raspberry Pi Zero due to its lack of graphics capability and costs more money. But if you need something like a Raspberry Pi Zero and can't get your hands on one, then you could consider this. Some applications will take some wrestling to get working smoothly, but this, I think this board would work very well in headless low power installations. And the board does give you a good opportunity to play around with RISC-V architecture if that's what you're interested in. There is another board from Mango Pi called the MQ Quad, which is a quad-core ARM chip powered version of this board and should be considerably more performant for roughly the same money. And we're going to be putting that board head to head with the Raspberry Pi 02W. We have actually have one in our review queue, so make sure you are subscribed to see that one. Let us know what you think of this board down in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day.